right, here we go. Another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, local realtor here with Sutton Group Ottawa. And today I am hosting one of Ottawa's greatest, Leslie Jamieson with Gifford Car Insurance. And we're talking specifically today about the Ottawa Cancer Foundation fight for the cure. As far as the actual training is concerned, you said about roughly seven months or so. What does that process look like? For the first three months, it's all footwork hand movements, shadow boxing, getting down your, uh, like, how to move. And you're dancing. You're dancing in that ring, but very slowly. And it's Lots all... Skipping and... Well, we don't do any of that. No. You do that on your off time. So I've incorporated that into my cardio. So I do a lot of skipping, a lot of running in mine. So my cardio is good. I've always been very good at the cardio side as well and just pure adrenaline junkie i believe but for fight for the cure for the first couple months was just ah we have to do shadow boxing again and scott actually teases me because i'll do my reps and i'll maybe like i screw it up and i have to go back and i have to fix it again and he's like i know that you're doing this because you don't want to do the shadow boxing i just want to get into the ring and throw punches that's all i want to do i like love it I love doing the pads. We had these, uh, he had brought in these, uh, they're not sticks, but they look like sticks, they're wands. And it was to do like defense, uh, defense uh, training. Terrible. It went so bad. Mm-hmm. People were hitting people in the shoulders with them instead of in the gloves. So I think those have been retired for now. Uh, the exciting part happened in end of May where we got our headgear in and our medical uh, medicals were cleared. So we could actually start hitting each other full contact. The first day that we went into the ring, I'll tell you, I don't usually get nervous. I don't have that a nerve feeling. So it's just, it's a room full of people. You're going to go in, you're going to do what you do. I literally was sitting there, someone went in first. I don't even remember who it was. And then Scott's like, you're up next. You're going in with Chantal, who's one of our female uh, coaches as well. Going in with her get ready so i'm sitting there and i'm like holy crap what have i done yeah what have i done i don't know that i want to do this is it because you watched somebody go before because you, you did say it's like you're it not became, that it's because it became real yeah, yeah. and then for the longest time they would have to tell me uh a lot of our alums come back too which is really cool and josh or ij they call him he was in the ring and he's like you're gonna hit me in the face and you're gonna get over this and i was like i don't know I don't feel right about it. Like, it doesn't feel right yet. Like, it just didn't feel right. And then as soon as I started throwing this, now it doesn't feel right not to throw punches Mm -hmm. into the face. But every day it's really cool because we learn something new and our bodies do something new. I think the heart, the biggest challenge right now in the training is getting out of your head. Yeah. Is the hardest thing. Yeah, we always tend to be in our own head when it comes to training. It's like we get sort of tunnel visioned on, okay, this is all I can do, but really there's a lot more in the, the tank than you think. Yeah. You know, especially if it's, when it comes to cardio, there's like at least 40% more. There's always at least 40% more. Yeah. Uh, but then when it comes to pushing the limit, I feel like there is a lot more where that comes from because we just keep pushing it. Yeah. The, uh, the one of the challenges right now is that we have to go so far in between your sparring matches. So you do two minutes in the round with an opponent um, and then you'll step out and then your your teammates will go in for a bit. The longer that we wait, the harder it is to get back into the ring. It's so strange. I would rather just like when the night of the fight, right, it's two minutes each with a minute in between for a break. So I find I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Because I feel that it'll, it's so much easier to catch your breath. How many rounds do you think you'll end up playing? It's three rounds. It's three rounds. Uh, and then depending on age brackets, it'll either be two minutes or a minute and 45 minutes. 45 seconds, sorry. A minute and 45. For, for Let's say a minute and 45 for uh, depending on the age bracket. Uh, two minute rounds, by the way, they're, they feel like ages. It doesn't. I can't wait for you to try out. You're going to try out next year. It doesn't feel that long in the ring. Yeah, depending on the opponent, yeah, it could feel well, like Yeah, that's probably true. Ages. I pro- my opponent probably feels like it's forever in the ring because I'm just lying. 
Yeah. It's your cardio. It's a lot of fun. It's all cardio. Like, I want to say like 90% of it is cardio. Technique, obviously, is going to help you and land the punch. Your defense is like... And, and the defense, of yeah. course. But cardio is what's going to help you throughout the whole two minutes. Yeah. And the defense, right? You just want to tire them out. Like a little bunny rabbit in there. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm so excited. when is the event going to take place? So October 26th at the Westin. And they just announced a couple of weeks ago that JSP is coming back for the event, which is really cool because last year I heard he did a big pep talk for all the fighters before they went on. No, he's a he's a UFC fighter. He's not a... He is a UFC uh, yeah. fighter, yeah, not a boxer. Yeah, he's pretty insane. Yeah, I'm excited. Much they did a UFC fight for the cure. And they just yeah. brought back alums that were fighting and it was like this big alumni fight. I think that would raise some money. I think so, especially now, like UFC is massive. It's been for the last like maybe six or seven years, it's been growing. I'm definitely trying like to, weeds. yeah, I'm definitely yeah. going to try to get that insurance policy because that's going to be oh, yeah. some dollars, yeah. eh? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm going to, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll make sure that you get on that to get that insurance policy. With that being said, what do you think, the, like what got you really drawn into doing this? My mom and my daughter. My mom, for sure, is always, always front and center for me. So in 2018, my mom was diagnosed with lung cancer. She's never smoked. She takes care of her body and she's always been healthy and uh, kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, so she had the last two lobes of one of her lungs taken out. So she still has part of one of her lungs, which is fantastic but I saw her completely change so and I don't know everything that she went through so my family doesn't actually live here they live in Kingston I wouldn't say that we are very close in terms of that my mom would share openly with me about how she's feeling and what she's going through on a daily basis but you can see that the person changes and I can only imagine now how lonely that must have felt and I know that she has a really strong support system. She works at the hospital, so she has a lot of access to care. But I feel that if I would have known that the Ottawa Cancer Foundation was available, maybe we could have, I could have went in and said, like, I don't really know how to process this myself, right? Because it's kind of like an out of sight, out of mind kind of situation. So it brings me back to 2018 when she got that and I can't help but feel so much regret about not being there for her and with her more um while she went through this and there's something really wild that people that have cancer go through that survive and it's PTSD yeah. which is a big thing and I my mom was telling me about it she said I have to go in for this scanned because she had gotten pneumonia which is very serious especially if you are missing part of your lung it's serious at any age with any ailments but anyway she had gone into the hospital and she was scared to death i don't, don't blame her yeah and i was like well it's just pneumonia and she goes no you don't understand and then she started opening up about the things that she's been struggling with and that she, you know, she's never suffered from anxiety and now she has anxiety constantly. She still works on it every day. She's still always smiling. She's always telling a joke. She's always helping somebody else. And I just thought to myself, I think to myself when I think about this commitment for Fight for the Cure, Cancer Foundation, my mom, what I didn't do and what I can do now, because we can't change the past. I can only change what I can, I can only change the future. And what I do now, and I think for right now, my biggest pushing moment was to say, maybe there's another mom and daughter out there need that support, and they don't even know that they need it yet, right? Yeah. So being out here and coming together as a group and being a woman fighting, and I don't know, I just, it's very powerful stuff for me in terms of that maybe you didn't show up then, but you can show up now. Yeah, and you said something that I kind of really... trailed off there a little bit, but not at all. I, I lost my train of thought because I'm thinking of a lot of other things. But 
Oh, well, this is a thing when you're talking about something that's it's, very deep like this. Yeah. It's always going to be a train of thought. But one of the biggest things that you said, which really kind of struck a chord for me here, was whenever you're talking about change, you know, you I definitely can't change the past. Can't. You can't change what you can't control. The past has already happened. That's right. But you can control the future. Yes. You can control how you react to what had happened. Yeah. By changing the, the future. It's making me more sympathetic to actually what you're, what she's gone through with my mom. And it's funny because parents are always so strong. They never show their weakness to their kids, which I don't always think is a great thing because then your children don't know to show you empathy all the time, right? Because they don't know that you're going through something. So now even though she doesn't show it to me, I know that she's going through something. Uh, and then another one of the biggest things for me is that my daughter, so I have a three-year-old uh, little girl, who is the apple of my eye, my absolute world. She came with me for my uh, my tryout, which is really cool. She shows a lot of interest in anything that I do. So I think just being a role model to her and showing her that, I mean, you have so much control in your life. And I mean, our health is something that we try to control, but ultimately, if you're going to get cancer, you're going to get cancer. So it's better to know a community that's going to help you. Yeah. And the biggest thing I find with uh, with cancer is like, it either brings families together or brings them apart, unfortunately. Yeah. And And this is where place like the Ottawa Cancer Foundation can actually help bring families together. Yes. Uh, you know, give them that support. Not everybody reacts the same way to stressors out there. And and cancer is not a small feat by any means, right? Like if, if I'm going through it or if someone in my family is going through it, it's going to cause a huge tension, especially because of PTSD. PTSD is one of the hardest things to, to, to deal with for, as a family. I never even thought that it would be a thing for cancer like so it's very ignorant that I just I wouldn't have ever thought of it and it is it is a it is a really big stressor for a lot of people that go through it you would think right oh you you're in remission it's not coming back breathe easy take take your time enjoy your life keep on living no when they get a cold now they're terrified that it's cancer coming back and it's it's that uh, incessant going to check up every six months and yeah. making sure that oh, there's nothing in it. It depends on like your situation. It could be every three months. It could be every six months. It could be once a year that you're going for a checkup. Yeah. And again, that PTSD when you go in and you're like, oh, holding it, your breath. Hopefully, it's all good. Breathe through it. Yeah. The the this is why I was saying like a lot of the times I find actually sometimes it brings families together and sometimes it, it takes them apart and it's all because of how we all deal with stress yes uh, you know depending on like the, the type of sort of personality that we have you know some people are just like the, the second that there's a little bit of stress they tend to fight or flight kicks in they they're gone some people it's the opposite they actually want to fight they want to to you know kind of come together build and, and do all of that so and and it's weird when you have it within the family where one person is one way and another person another way and it's just like it's not really clicking and then this is where having something like the Ottawa Cancer Foundation and having also the support system hey for example talk to your insurance I'm sure you can find a psychologist that you can talk to somebody that you can chat with yeah but the Ottawa Cancer Foundation has one they have a, a licensed therapist on staff that works with yeah people that are yeah. that are suffering and they have like support groups yeah so i mean there's definitely power in people going through the same thing at the same time and that's the thing like with cancer it's like not one of those situations where it's just it's only really hitting your health yeah no it's it does hit multiple things like so financially you're affected because yeah. you're most likely off work this and that so you want to make sure that insurance hopefully covers you for for that uh, mentally, you're definitely destroyed. Yeah. Just, you know, saying from experience there, you definitely need that support as far as psychologically and, you know, having somebody to talk to, uh, a grief counsel, if you will, to to just help you through. Mm -hmm. And that's for all the family. That, that's not just you. It's not just the uh, that's actually the part that's for the whole family. It's not just you. It's yeah. probably also uh, a lot more important for the rest of the family so they can support you. 
yeah. talking back about the, you know, the, the life support, you know, bringing, putting your oxygen mask on first is you definitely want to be able to, as a family, come together. Yeah. So they need their support system there. Yeah. Uh, and then also food is a, is a huge contributor when you're going through it. That's true. Yeah, Ottawa Cancer Foundation actually also hosts this. It's called a simmer, social simmer, social simmer, and they all cook together. Uh, volunteers will hop out and they'll cook, and it's just a it's therapy, right? Like it is there. There's therapy and cooking and just eating well and yeah. enjoying. And it's actually, I, one of the things that I got really turned on through pandemic is cooking, cooking, uh, and then just like literally enjoying that whole aspect of it, I find it very soothing, very comforting to just yeah. be able to cook for three or four people, 10 people, it doesn't matter as long as you're there, nobody's in the kitchen, just me. I don't like it when oh, someone, okay. someone else is in the kitchen. I just, it gives me a little bit of anxiety. But if I'm doing it by myself, oh. no problem. I can get everybody all taken care of. You have a plan, I guess. Yeah. There's a plan and then you know for a fact that it's it's all going to be taken care of one at a time. I think there's a lot of pleasure in cooking for others. Yeah. You can cook with somebody as long as, you know, they're on the same wavelength. No, I'm the same as you. Mm. Please just sit, just go do something else. You know what? Here's a glass of wine. Go yeah. enjoy it and let me. Let me Have you it. ever thought about mowing the lawn? Like maybe dusting some floorboards or baseboards or whatever. Yeah. Now's the time. Go yeah, just it. go take a bath. Go do something else. I love cooking. I love watching. I'm the same. I love watching my family. So for them to do that at the Cancer Foundation, I think is really amazing as well so it is a really cool idea like they have a whole kitchen there and when yeah. i walked in it was really it's really nice but it's a good way as well too like i said cooking it has always been at least in my culture it's like something that brings everybody together the food yeah. brings everybody together it's a good way to just kind of get the family back on the same table literally. yeah yes and i think it's really important for people that have either gone through treatment or are going through treatment to have people that can guide them through because your taste buds all change mm -hmm. after treatment, right? So uh, something that may have been sour before, you probably won't be able to taste it anymore or vice versa, whatever, right? So there's a lot of changes that happen in your life. Like it's not just, uh, okay, well, I had this, I'm going to deal with this and then it's done. It's, it's funny you say that because my, so as I mentioned, 50-50 with the family, one of my brothers was, uh, you know, a cancer patient at some point. And when his taste buds changed, he used to be able to love coriander and he just can't do it anymore. Doesn't like it? Like he just can't it taste like soap now. Yeah, that happens. It's bizarre. Yeah. I feel so bad. I feel I feel really bad that uh, it changes so much of your body. Like it just it really does change your entire life. Mm -hmm. So to have something like the Cancer Foundation there to be able to walk you through like Hey, listen, don't be worried when this changes. Just know that this is now going to be a part of your life. Yeah, I mean, there's no issues. Heads up. There's no sense in beating up on yourself for something that's wasn't but, caused by you other than the fact that it just happened to you. That'd be very frustrating. The cool thing about the idea of like the, teach, the cooking and, and getting them all of that, what I find with stuff like this is just it really takes your mind off of the main thing, which is the omniscient cancer, Yes, you know? Finding a, a new hobby or something like that it's just going to take you off and, and like get you busy with it definitely changes things for you, for sure. Yeah. I think that it would be really nice when you're cooking and you haven't left in a while. Mm -hmm. And then you meet somebody new. And they're, you know, they're at a different point in that journey. And... They say something and it sparks something in you that you thought was gone forever. And then that changes you for the better, points you into a different direction, takes you in a different part of your journey. I just, I think, I think that part of it is really special. And I hope that that's what happens. I haven't been to one of the events yet. Uh, I would love to volunteer with the Cancer Foundation after Fight for the Cure is done, if not before, to kind of really get a feel of, of what, what are they going through? What can I, yeah. what can I do to help you? I just, I get a lot of, I get a lot of joy to help others. I really, I really love that part of this whole journey is that you're, you're helping so many people. Yeah. I got a lot of messages from women 
after our launch party in June. So June 20th, we had our official launch party. We announced everybody. I made the front page of the citizen. I don't know if you saw it. Me and Julie, I booped her on the nose. Nice. Yeah. So, Deflecting. She thinks I'm nice, eh? She thinks I'm nice. We are coming back to that. I really appreciate that you're circling back on it. What do you want to tell her? Wow. Julie, watch out. I mean, keep laughing. Just keep laughing. Leslie's coming for you. Well, I'm coming. And I'm not as nice as I look. Uh, she, she's all well put together, but guess what? When she gets in that ring. Scrappy. Very scrappy. Yeah, very scrappy. Uh, I would say, we made, I made a joke that I walk into punches, but maybe it's not true. Maybe I'm very good at defense. Maybe I'm very good at it. Maybe I'm not. Maybe it's all psychological. Uh, it's for you to watch out, Julie. Yeah, I watch out. I'd be, uh, I'd be practicing your jump rope. <laughs> that footwork. Yeah, get that footwork get down. Get that footwork. It's yeah. ducking it one in, one out. Yes. There's no friends inside the ring. No, no. No friends. Oh, my God. My brother that's and I the, used to used That's to the fight, show. Like, yeah. That's the show. That's the one one place where, like, you just completely, there's no friends. You're right. It is so powerful. I'll tell you, it is so powerful to be in that ring as as and I'm sure you can relate to somebody that has so many responsibilities on their plate. When you get in that ring, it's all me. And I love to do me. Like I love that feeling of empowerment and I don't have to worry about anybody else in this ring except for me for two minutes. Perfect. Yeah, it's a good way to shut off all of the things that you don't necessarily want to think Done. about. Yes. In that two minutes. It's the same. It is definitely the same feeling as the gym where you go in yes. and shut off. Yeah. But this is not just shut off. Shut off, aggression taken out. It's it's literally therapeutic. Yes. This is uh, this is the part where... You meant punching bag, Julie. Yeah. I definitely might wear two I think guards. I we might have went a little too far with that one. You meant punching bag, Julie. Not a punching Careful. bag. No? Not a punching no. bag. No. She's not going to be a punching bag. However, I would probably wear two mouth guards. I did go to... She's talking trash. I did go to Mexico and learn how to uppercut with a professional boxer. Oh, no. Let me tell you, it was a running joke for and you're ever. To, you're it was so fun. I don't all, think so. All of those. I don't think so. No uppercuts. I don't think so. I'll find out. We'll find out. I hope it doesn't get out of hand. Well, we'll see. Really appreciate this, Leslie. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, for folks that are watching, really appreciate that you guys are watching. Always hit us up with the comments. Let us know if you have any sort of idea about a business in the city that you want to interview. And also, if there's any sort of foundation that's close and near to your heart, let us know as well, too, in the comments. For more episodes like this, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon so you can get a little bit more notification every time something like this comes. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit that like button. And Leslie, thank you so much again. Really appreciate it for coming. I'm really excited. Can't wait. Julie, watch out. Yeah, watch out.